Okay. So now we are sitting on our section. We left. I'd like to call this meeting to order. Roll call, please. Mr. Ballard? Here. Ms. Nazario? Here. Ms. Johnson? Mr. Sturgill? Here. Mr. Williams? Here. Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of Allegiance to the, to the flag, flag of the United, United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Recognition of visitors, seeing none. We have the first hearing of the public, please. We have the first hearing of the public, please. Come on, Jay, don't let me down. Don't let me down. <laughs> I was looking at Barbie. And I'm like, wow. Must be a new day. <laughs> Nothing? Uh, <laughs> hearing none. Need a uh, motion to approve the minutes of the meeting on November the 18th? So moved. Support. Roll call. Mr. Sturgill? Yes. Mr. Williams? Yes. Mr. Ballard? Yes. Ms. Nazario? Yes. Okay, any old business? We're moving right along today, guys. Is there any old business? Yeah, welcome to the new person. That's old business <laughs> with the new person. <laughs> I think that, thank you, he's talking about you. So welcome to the team. Thank you. Officially. Thank you. Absolutely. Report and recommendations of the treasurer. Do you have anything today? Nothing at this time. I have nothing at this time, and I'm assuming you have nothing from the CEO? No. Okay. We're down to the second hearing of the public. This is like on fire here. Record. This could be the right here. Oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Barbie Washington, Riverside Drive. Um, welcome Thank to you. the crew. Um, Thank you. I was wondering if you guys can please help out our teachers and staff at Palm, um, Johnny Wilson, and Frank Asento. We're receiving numerous calls, text messages, and um, Facebook messages. Just the chaos that's going on at all three of those schools. Multiple um, people are reaching out, behavior issues, uh, teachers under attack being blamed um, for just numerous things that they have no control over. It's, I know you've been made aware um, of some of those things. Is there? a plan, can anything be done uh, now? I have had some reports of some things that were going on. Um, teachers, administrators, everybody, I think they're, they're trying to work through whatever is going on there. And I do understand that some of those schools were the lower performing schools as well. So I think they're having those conversations with those, teacher, those teachers on how they can improve. I know they had some community meetings kind of scheduled, but they've taken those down to first try to deal with it at the school level with the administration and the teachers. Um, I will be visiting, we will be visiting some of the schools this week. We did reach out to the CEO to let him know that we will be going in just to kind of get a, a look-see on what's going on firsthand ourselves and uh, have some of those conversations. So we will do all we can to bring calmness to that and to try to bring comfort to those who are in the middle of that uh, turmoil or that you described. Uh, thank you. Um, Mr. Cawthon, uh, the newspaper stated December 4th for the next ADC meeting. The district does not um, make parents aware of those meetings. Do you have the time or location or any further information? Not as of yet. Um, I don't know if it's officially been announced. I don't believe it has by uh, the chairperson, but the anticipation is that it will be on the 4th, and I think the back update if it would not be the 4th or the 11th, but we're looking to make sure that it is either one of those two dates and preferably the 4th. Uh, I would assume it'd be at 5 o'clock, which is the normal practice for those meetings so that we can continue on with the uh, progress that we've made. That's the plan. Okay. That's it. Thank you. I'll add to <clears throat> Mrs. Washington's statements. So we have a process where we send out and make everyone aware when our meetings are going on. Do you know what that process is or could you address that with your board and yeah, to all make that sure I the know is, is knows. the chairperson Randall Sampson will notify um, Elena of, of an official meeting and then there'll be like an email a mass email that will be sent out and I don't know who all is on that but I know it is I believe it's through the district but I don't know if it's actually a 
quote unquote press release type of announcement. But I know that he has been asked to make those public so that the community is aware of when those ADC meetings are scheduled in the Times. But as far as he's the one that does put those pieces of information out. Very good. And while you have the microphone, I know there's a lot of things, a lot of action, motion going on. And I know you and I talk from time to time, but just to bring the entire board up to speed on what's going on, could you kind of give us sure. an update on what's going on in the ADC world? Yeah, um, I did talk with uh, the Attorney General's office on Friday, and it looks like everything is moving um, ahead in a pretty good fashion. There is uh, nearness to a transition agreement. Uh, not there yet, but it's there's some optimism that will be happening shortly, as well as the framework being put in place for the interim CEO that will be taking over soon, very soon. So I, there's a sense of, of optimism those things are going to be getting done, hence the necessity to have a meeting on hopefully the 4th or at the very latest the 11th of December to move forward the, the process and get things moving. So the, the plan is, at least from our perspective as the ADC, uh, the sooner the better, and then we can start uh, having those conversations with, you know, hopefully getting some things together with both the board and the ADC and the new interim CEO. So, You guys have any questions or follow-up? Yeah, am, am I understanding this correctly that January 3rd isn't, isn't a date? I mean, the, the new CEO could be here before January 3rd? I, I believe that's a possibility, yeah. I, I think... Um, I, I don't have a definite date, but from some of the conversations, that could be earlier than the third. It would not necessarily have to be the third. It could so be it sometime in December. It doesn't sacred of, about that date. No, I don't believe. I think this, the the third is the transitioning out of the current CEO. Yeah. But I believe the interim CEO, um, from my conversations, would be uh, willing to become a part of the district sooner than that. And I think the uh, state is open to that as well. So I think there's good vibes on both ends to have uh, the new person come in before actually January 3rd and, and kind of hit the ground running, which is, I think, a very good thing for all of us. And I will uh, reiterate what he's saying. In the conversations that I've had, they're trying to make the transition happen sooner, so there is a true handoff and there's some time of working together to make sure that nothing gets lost in the cracks as, as a new person comes in. So I think that's... Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I'm mean, just like I tell people, I'm feeling very optimistic about the direction that we're headed, and I'm, I'm encouraged by what's happened in the last few weeks as far as on, on all ends, actually. So, the most encouraging part to me is how well the board and the ADC have been working together. Yeah, absolutely. Like you process. mentioned, the, the walkthrough piece will be going we're doing along. That together. There'll be a couple ADC members along with some board members tomorrow doing those walkthroughs, and I think that's just another example of the collaboration piece that we've needed. Absolutely. Thank you. Paul? Uh, Paul Bieber, 4709 Lake Road. Uh, I'm here as I'm the vice president of the Booster Club. And as you know or may not know, uh, the Booster Club just uh, financed the building of a softball and baseball field uh, for softball and baseball teams. Now, that money was originally <laughs> in the budget uh, when the school was built. Mm -hmm. Those were supposed to come with it, and then there was the freeze that got put on, and I, that was more a function of the ADC. Is there any way to check if those funds are in escrow or somewhere or, or something of that nature? Because that was supposed to be part and parcel of this, this building mm -hmm. uh, when it was built. And if that's available, then certainly it could be put to use for the facilities, because we were going to use that money too make some improvements to the stadium, but since our baseball and softball teams haven't had a home game for a couple of years because wow. uh, they don't have a field, uh, we just went ahead and were proactive uh, on that. So, uh, I mean, I know there's a lot of other things here on everybody's agenda, but that, that no, would... if, if there was anything left, it would be it would still be in the building, the building fund, and it would still be, I mean, I think Jeff Hawks would be the person yeah, we, I can follow up with Jeff and see what's yeah, there. we'd have to follow well, up I, I, I know it all was in, and there was a lot put forth for the extracurriculars in the last budget that uh, Dr. Graham had. And then that just all got frozen uh, at that takeover. And now, you know, I don't know if it ever got unfrozen, if it's still there 
or whatever. But you get the point. I don't need to belabor that point. Sure, but I will add to that. So when I first came, we were still having a relationship over at Campana Park. Did we ever have a, a relationship with Campana Park? They were taking care of it. So we haven't had a home yes, game, so you say? Go ahead. Please. Remember, we were um, considering taking considering over the park. Yeah, the park. Mm -hmm. The entire thing and working out with some kind of a manager to figure out in our off-season um, management of it and, and recruiting tournaments and all that stuff. Um, we had talked about this probably like two years running before uh, the big transition. Mm -hmm. And at last, we were supposed to be taking the park. Um, and that remember there was a big riff with City Hall mm -hmm. and CEO <coughs> of that piece. And so um, it's probably still sitting in limbo. What has, do you know what's happened with the park? Well, I know the mayor is pursuing a plan of uh, a person who, is, who would like to make the improvements there and then have the opportunity to run tournaments, et cetera, out of there. So the investment with us having the, with was that at Campana Park? No, no, okay, it's, 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 no, it's uh, on Generous our property, and, okay. and it will be maintained by our maintenance people. Okay. So, so uh, yeah, that's done. Okay. And glad to do that. But, I mean, we, there, there are plenty of other things we could spend money for. <laughs> well, I, I have a question for you, Paul. Will this still be named after Jim Popio? Well, that would be another good thing. You know, we haven't really, I, I mean, we have a scholarship named after him, and we'd certainly like to work that out. Oh, but his baseball field was on this, this property sure. right here. Yeah, no, no objection there. I'm sure the Booster Club will go along with that. Uh, just right now, we're just working through the process of, you know, getting the lawn, the base, the base is set up. I know it takes about $60,000 to build a fairly nice baseball field with dugouts. Yeah, I think what, what we put in right now is 30000 Yeah. Well, no, but we don't have dugouts, fences, scoreboard, any of that stuff. We've got a ball field. Oh, yeah. That's well, you know, with drainage, with, oh. uh, with dirt and, and all and, that. And where was that site at? Uh, I, the softball field is over by George Daniel. Behind George Daniel. I'm not absolutely positive where the baseball field is. It may be over there as well, uh, or it might be on this property, maybe on the old Charleston. Don't, don't no, hold me to it. Charleston was like the, that was kind of. The right, that's what was all set up for in, in, in the first place before that freeze hit. So, I, I believe when, when you were on the board that we, we were talking about the Charleston being the baseball field. And, and the way they have to set yeah, things like well, that. Yeah, well, I've just been stunned. We 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 uh, acknowledged, you know, agreed to spend the money, and a month later it was all done. I haven't seen them yet either, but uh, everybody, the coaches and the AD, have looked at it, and they're happy as could be. And the big problem is drainage, you know, crowning the field, et cetera. That's a big problem out at the pipe yard, and that's what we're trying to work out with the guy with the city. He's got to put in the drain tile, crown the field. Mm -hmm. And then all that other stuff, and he's got to do is put a pencil to paper and figure out if he can run enough tournaments through there to make it pay for him uh, to to do it. I mean, good public-private partnership. And then uh, just just the other thing is, uh, you know, you were talking about that. Uh, as Washington was talking about the problems over at the uh, the schools. I think internally, we should make an effort to not use. And I'm going to hesitate to use this the enemy's terminology. We don't have failing schools. Okay. We're not a failing district, and I don't think we should use those terms among ourselves. Just a, just a little semantic difference, but uh, I think it's important because it just plays into the, the false uh, uh, scenario that's been portrayed of us all along. You know, we're going to have our first baseball, basketball game, and I guarantee you anybody who walks in is not going to say that this is a failing school district sure. <laughs> when you walk into that full, full house with all the uh, everything going on. So enough. No, I, mean, I appreciate two, that. Two points. Mr. Yeah. Ballard. I will follow up with Mr. Hawks to get an answer to your question. Yeah, and uh, yeah, you might, uh, t AD might have some info, and okay. Graham might, and, and probably who put the freeze on, you know. I, I, it wasn't us. Uh, no, I know that. I'm, I'm, I'm avoiding using any names. Yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> also, yes, uh, maybe Thank you, you. Might, um, and, you, and Tia can check it out. We haven't had a report on um, the LFI funds. Uh, that's what I was going to follow Remember, up there was that. <coughs> actually, we thought it was one chunk. <coughs> the last we heard, it was a bigger chunk mm -hmm. than we thought. I think we thought it was like three or 400,000. Yeah. It turns out it's like a million plus or something. Yeah. Um, but we don't know. And, and I guess the other piece is, have there been any projects over the last three years that have been done with LFI funding? 
the last thing that we heard about is they were talking about the expansion that we had talked about with the atrium and the auditorium. Um, but then nothing went any further. So um, the status of that, because that should still be collecting interest, I would presume. I will check. Anything else from the public? <clears throat> Hearing none, um, actually we need to go into an executive session under C, litigation. Need a motion? Motion to go to executive session for item C. Second. <coughs> Roll call. Uh, Mr. Williams? Yes. Ms. Nazario? Yes. Mr. Ballard? Yes. And Mr. Sturgill? Yes. Okay, we're going into executive session. Not sure if we're going to make any decisions coming out, but we'll be back very shortly. Need a motion to come out of executive session, please? So moved. Support. Roll call. Uh, Mr. Sturgill? Yes. Mr. Williams? Yes. Mr. Ballard? Yes. Ms. Nazario? Yes. Okay, before I close and offer the next meeting schedule, I'll open up the mic again just for one last time. Is there anything else from the public? Is there anything else from the public? All hearts and minds are clear. Okay, what's our next scheduled meeting? December 9th. December 9th, 5 o'clock right here. Any objections there? Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Roll call. Mr. Williams. Yes. Ms. Nazario. Yes. Mr. Ballard. Yes. And Mr. Sturgill. Yes. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you. This has been a production of Lorraine City Schools TV20 WLCS.